Announcement time! To celebrate the sudden surge of subscribers that I swiftly secured, I have made a Discord server. A cool new sparkly Discord server where you can interact with me and other members of the community. Not only that, but you can take part in special events, just like the one that I plan to start next week. If any of this tickles your fancy, then there will be a link in the description of this video. Announcement time over! Let's get back to it. Hello! Welcome back, it's me, Porter, and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you all so much for all of the love and support that I got on the Designing Convergent Pokemon video. Seriously, that video has almost 200,000 views, which is just crazy. I'm, I'm blown away. Seriously, thank you. Anywho, after the success of that video, I wanted to crank out some more Pokemon designs as soon as I possibly could. So, I decided to try my hand at creating some Paradox Pokemon. For those who don't know, Paradox Pokemon are new forms of pre-existing Pokemon as they would appear in the distant past or far future. These Pokemon could be Game Freak's take on the idea of speculative evolution, but it's hard for me to say for sure. At this point, it's just speculation. I made four Paradox Pokemon in total. Two of them are from the past, two of them are from the future, and all of them are from the machinations of my mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to the art. So, fun fact, Parasect was actually the Pokemon that inspired this entire video. I came up with the idea for its Paradox form last year and wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it because, well, let's be honest here, Parasect isn't exactly the most memorable Pokemon. It has the mediocre typing of Bug Grass and a base stat total of 405, which isn't exactly great for a fully evolved Pokemon. It's outclassed by a ton of other Bugger Grass types that do exactly what it does, just better. Despite all of that, I do actually really like Parasect. I think the concept behind its design is super cool and really spooky. It's based on the Cordyceps fungus, a parasitic mushroom that takes control of insects and puppets them around like mycelium marionettes. An interesting concept like this, plus Game Freak's neglect for Parasect, plus its non-existent competitive viability, make it a perfect candidate to get a new form. Which brings us to Iron Host. First things first. All the future Paradox Pokémon have names that start with the word Iron, describing their robotic design, and another word at the end that encompasses the rest of their design. In this case, Host refers to this Pokémon being the host to a parasite, but not just any parasite. A good amount of the information we've gotten about the future Paradox Pokémon alludes to aliens having something to do with their existence. So, I took the mushroom on Parasect's back and turned it into an alien mind-controlling parasite. What's even better is that I was able to make the parasite look vaguely like a UFO hovering above the rest of the body and watching menacingly with its big digital eye. The rest of the body is just a robotic version of Parasect, and though it's not visible from Iron Host's current pose, I like to think that its back has a docking station for the parasite to land and rest. In that dock state, I imagine that the eyes of the body would light up with the same pinkish color as the parasite, as the parasite takes full control. Iron Host, the Paradox Pokemon, a grass and psychic type. An old expedition journal references the strange pair of beings known as Iron Host, which seem to be an amalgamation of technology from two very different worlds. The highly advanced brain of this pair seems to not only control the less advanced being, but use it as a dock to recharge after prolonged periods of flight. A paranormal magazine theorizes that the less advanced body was a misguided attempt at freeing Parasect from the mushroom that controls it, while the more advanced being is a drone designed to take over the minds of other Pokémon. I am super happy with this design. It gives Parasect a well-deserved facelift after 27 years of neglect. But just because I like it doesn't mean that everyone else will, so why don't you guys give me some critiques in the comments? Last time I asked for critiques in the comments, I was super happy to see tons of ideas and constructive criticism. So please, tell me what you think of these designs. I read every single comment, and it always fills me with so much joy. Oh, and while you're down there, you might as well leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Last time I asked for a thousand subs before the end of the year, and I got over 7,000 in just a few weeks. Which is 
just absolutely bonkers. This time I'm going to ask for a total of 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year and see how far we can push this. So, if you like my content and you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. But anywho, let's get back on track. Out of all the Pokémon I decided to give Paradox Forms to, Spiritomb definitely deserved it the least. It's already a great design with a fun typing, good stats, and a special side quest required to get it in most games. It doesn't really need any more love. But, unlike Parasect, Spiritomb wasn't chosen because it's bad. I just had a really cool idea for a Paradox Form that was a hologram, and Spiritomb kind of fit my idea the best out of any other Pokémon. Iron Image wasn't super hard to design. I started by turning the odd keystone that Spiritomb is tied to into a cute little robot guy. The cracks of that keystone allowed me to create an interesting design using multiple panels and some eyes to create a cute little face. I then gave the little guy a spherical wheel that it can use to move around quickly. I really like to imagine Iron Image kind of just rolling around like one of those mouse droids in Star Wars, except faster and with a big projector lens on its head that it uses to create spooky holograms. Speaking of holograms, I turned the swirling head of Spiritomb into a more square and digital version of the same thing for Iron Image. I even came back later and turned the orbs orbiting Spiritomb's face into big squares and added some extra details to make it look more like a hologram. Last but not least, I used a more saturated version of Spiritomb's color palette to color Iron Image, since that seems to be another trend amongst all of the future Paradox Pokémon. Iron Image, the Paradox Pokémon, an electric and ghost type. This odd little machine appears to be a holographic image projector that bears a passing resemblance to the odd keystone that binds the Pokémon to Spiritomb. According to an article in a dubious magazine, this Pokémon projects fear-invoking images to scare away people that get too close to it. The name Iron Image comes from a similar machine described in an expedition journal. You might have guessed it by now, but the odd keystone is the actual Pokémon here, and it is so... Cute! I seriously love this whole design, but imagining this little fella rolling around the place having a good time just makes me love it so much more. It's also really cool to have a second electric ghost type. I mean, it's fake and it will probably never exist in the games, but it's still cool to have. But sadly, that's all the cool futuristic robots I have for you. So, I think it's about time we move on to some dinosaurs. Paradox Dodrio was actually the second Paradox idea that I had when preparing this video. I wanted to turn Dodrio into a terror bird, a big flightless bird from the Cenozoic era that was very accurately named. Seriously, that thing looks like it was terrifying. Dodrio is another perfect candidate for a new form since it hasn't really gotten any love from Game Freak and has the fun, interesting concept of an ostrich-like bird with three heads. It's a cool Pokemon and it definitely deserves some more love than it's getting. The past Paradox Pokémon don't really have a unifying theme for their names other than sounding like death metal bands, so I can basically name this whatever I want. And if you can't guess why Triple Terror is called Triple Terror, then you deserve to have me explain every name in excruciating detail for the rest of time. Like I said before, it's primarily based on terror birds, but I also pulled inspiration from cavemen and accurate depictions of raptors. I added the raptor influence in there because of a weird trend that I noticed between all the past Paradox Pokémon. They all have or gain dinosaur-esque tails. Out of all of them, Fluttermane is a bit debatable, but I think it has tails on the back of its head? I don't know though. I'm just gonna say that it does so that my theory holds out. Anywho, I gave it a raptor tail and beefed up the design of Dodrio quite a bit. I also gave each head its own distinct personality instead of making them all generically angry. This admittedly makes the design look a bit goofy, but I think that Triple Terror rides the line between goofy, cool, and intimidating very well. It makes it very friend-shaped, and that's what you want in a Pokémon design. For its colors, I just used Odrio's colors with a slightly darker version of the red in its tail feathers. Triple Terror, the Paradox Pokémon, a ground and normal type. Sightings of the creature called Triple Terror say that its three heads work in perfect harmony, coordinating their attacks to deliver a fatal blow that can topple opponents much larger than itself. 
The name is taken from a creature described similarly in an old expedition journal. This Pokemon was featured in a paranormal magazine where it was classified as a Dodrio from 66 million years ago. Triple Terror is my absolute favorite design from this video. Like I said, it rides the line between cute, cool, and scary very well. I was debating whether or not to make it a ground flying type, but I decided that ground normal made it a lot more sense since Triple Terror can't fly. I'm honestly not convinced that Dodrio can fly either, but it learns the move. I don't know, what do you think? But anyway, we've got one more design to go, so let's get right into it. Chinchou and Lantern are some of my favorite water types ever and don't really need any changes. The only reason I'm making a Paradox Chinchou is because I wanted to make an unevolved Paradox Pokemon. So far, past Paradox Pokemon are the only ones that can be forms of unevolved Pokemon, so I wanted to take the challenge of turning a cute Pokemon into a terrifying creature from the past. Also, I thought it would be cool to make Chinchou look more like an anglerfish. In terms of design, Chilling Lure is just a creepier Chinchou. It has big fangs and an underbite, just like an anglerfish. There's also a spike on its head, and it even has a tail fin. For the colors, I changed the yellow of the lights and eyes to an icy blue, darkened the blue of its body, and added some orange to the color palette to show off its electric typing. Overall, I wanted Chilling Lure to look a little disturbing since it lives in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. The creepy look also ties into the name and the new ice typing of the design since an encounter with this Pokemon will definitely send a chill down your spine. Chilling Lure, the Paradox Pokemon, an ice and electric type. This Pokemon resembles a creature described in an old expedition journal called Chilling Lure. Its two antennae are surging with electricity of different charges, yet remain freezing cold to the touch. It lives at the bottom of the ocean, only surfacing when its food supply is burning low. There is an article in a dubious magazine that describes this Pokemon as a prehistoric form of Chinchou. I really love this design too. It's got a creepy blank stare and a maw of razor sharp teeth, but it still manages to be very friend shaped. And I know I've been patting myself on the back this whole video, but I honestly think these are all incredible designs, and I hope you all like them too. If you do, let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to give me some constructive criticism while you're at it. And while you're at it, you should leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like I said earlier, I want to try to make it to 10,000 subs by the end of the year, which is honestly a goal that you'll probably shatter within a week. Oh, and if you want another way to interact with me and other members of the community, you can do that in the new Discord server I made. I talked about it a bit in the beginning of the video, but if you want to join, there's a link in the description below. Anywho, I hope you all enjoyed the video, I had a lot of fun making it. Have a nice day, and just remember, Porter was here. Yeah!